Good morning and welcome to another Haskell Kata. Um, we will do the daily uh, the bowling game Kata again today. Um, also again in algebra driven design. Uh, but I took a note of the laws that we had yesterday. So um, we can go over them first to see whether they are a good abstraction and whether we still want to do it that way or can uh, switch it around. So it might go quicker than yesterday, which is what I hope for. Um, well, let's, uh, let's go over the laws first. I have to switch the scene here. Um, what we did yesterday was uh, have a law where we could say, if we roll zero, there, there will be no change in the score. If we uh, roll anything um, for an empty game, um, the score will not change by l less than zero or by more than uh, 10. If we roll uh, in, no, if we have a game that is at frame 10, this is a pool game, and I'm having doubts about this one. Um, it might just be a definition for something. Um, I'm not sure if it's law, uh, like we can just um, I'm not sure how much generatable code is in there. Uh, generatable tests, I mean. Um, there is also the law of uh, if we ha are at a new frame and we uh, roll a spare, we have the score go up by that plus the two next rolls, uh, the, the, the next roll. And the same for a strike. If we are at a new frame and we roll a strike, uh, the two next rolls are counted double. Um, yeah. Okay, can't spell. I really can't spell. I'm sorry. Um, so let's uh, design the interface again, or let's write the types again, like we do in the kata uh, in algebra driven design. I have to wake up. Good morning, everyone. So let's go over the types. Um, we will have the game type to write the algebra for. Uh, it needs at least one constructor to uh, be able to create it. And we need to be able to modify it by using the role, I am guessing. And we need to be able to observe it by using the score function. Uh, that is almost a given let's see um, the game creates the game object uh, the role function I will still write down that it makes an end and modifies an existing game um, and there's the score function that can read, uh, can observe a game. Yeah. And to try to write a law for it. Um, well, we can have this simple law, actually, that the new game always has a score of zero. That's by definition. So maybe that is a thing we can do. Right. For all uh, generated games. Well, no, not for all generated games. This is a unit test. Because we will not generate anything else. Um, okay. 
so this is a, a really tiny definition um but yeah we can say for any game the zero is uh, adding a zero doesn't add to the score so let's let's still do this We have to define the gen game again. And we have to add um should be. And we have to make sure that the game is showable just to have it compile. Um, let's do away with these uh, imports for now, so we can see that we have failures, but it compiles. Um, so this is the no score law. Uh, we have the definition of a full frame because we want to be able to find out at what frame we are in order to test whether we can add a, um, a sparrow or a strike. That's what we said yesterday, but we can, even in frame 10, add a sparrow or a strike, um, because we don't need, don't need to know at which uh, frame we are. We just need to know that we are at the start of a frame so that we have an open game, um, an op a new frame. So the frame number, we can leave out for now but there has to be a way to tell uh, whether we are at the start of a frame before we roll so we need to add that observation um, or we can say and that is the other thing that i had in mind uh, that we stop uh, adding um uh, individual roles and only add uh, complete frames to the game because we are only interested in the score at the end of the game um, which uh, contradicts what we did in the, the previous two laws that we uh, written down um, but if we are mainly interested at least in the score at the end of the game we are probably not that interested when uh, in the game when we add a single role I've been pondering that uh, <clears throat> but we might be able to have something hybrid and then we need the observation the observation are we at the start of a frame or aren't we so um, um we can say that we are at the start of a frame if all the rows before it add up to uh, well if the row before it is either a 10 no, it's, that doesn't work for the last frame. If the number of rolls we had... No. Would, would that work? How would you define being at the start of a frame? Let's just say that we can uh, decide. We don't have a law for it yet. Say we have the is new frame. 
Ah, ja, schön. As always with the timestamps. Game. Cool. So I have the observation. I'm sorry. We had, we had, do have the observation. We, we are able to observe whether we are at the start of a, a frame. Because at that point, we can add a spare or a strike and have a law about it. If we, have a, if, if we have a new frame and we uh, add a strike, we ah, we need to be able to filter it so. Yeah. We could also say this, I guess. Um, if it is a new frame and we roll a strike, the score will go up by 10. Ah, we don't still, we still don't have observably equal, but maybe we can add that later. The score of the game. Uh, yeah, we need three rolls now. If we roll R1 after. Oh, what am I doing? After rolling R0, after rolling the strike, in the game that is at the start of the frame, that should be the score of, it, of the initial game, plus value of the strike, plus Two times the value of the first roll plus two times the value of the second roll. Well, yeah. And let's define general and let's also define this as uh, clamped rolls for now. Oh, wait, we don't need to do this yet. So I think this is this is some kind of law that would really hold up for strikes. If we also do this for spares, then we have all the laws that we had before. We only need one roll for that because there is only one roll that counts double. And that means that we have this is this is this totally correct i am second guessing myself again because the law that um if you roll strike what if what if roll 0 the one after the strike is also a strike Is this? <laughs> I am so sorry if this doesn't lead anywhere again. If uh, if roll zero is also a strike, that means that roll one would count double as well. But do we know this already, or do we? We have to decide. No, we. I think I think we need to be able to roll 
uh, no, I don't, I think it's how would you how would you count the score if if you roll if you roll a strike and the roll next uh, you roll something you don't finish the frame after that if you haven't finished it so you roll a strike then you roll two pins do you already count those two double so do you already add them to the previous frame so that your strike frame uh, now is 12 if so this is not a law that holds up because <laughs> if roll zero is a strike and roll one whatever that is now counts triple because you already uh, in this scenario you have rolled twice after the first strike and both to count double but the yeah the second one would have to count uh, again for the real zero strike this abstraction does not work i mean no this is not true this law does not work uh, i'm leading you on again i mean that's not a, not the correct expression um Okay, let's think what we can do here to fix this. Well, we can say, well, if this is not a strike, but I do not like why I didn't did I take this only works if this is because yeah, if it is not a strike. And it doesn't matter if anyone is rolling a spare here because we don't have anything yet for the roll that comes after. Okay. This was an easy fix, but I do not like this law. It's we do need a different law for whether for if this also is a strike. I think it's better to try and write laws about finished games, about completed games. Hmm. So what is next? Can we do something about multiple strikes? Well, except for these things, I, uh, I do not like the way that we have to uh, add individual roles here. Ugh. Uh, this is not a this law isn't complete yet this is what is a spare a spare is two rolls that add up to ten so we need to have something generated here we still need a r1 the r1 would count double and the r Ten this it's Paris a spare consists of two rolls. So we have a ten minus R zero and R zero here. And R zero also has to be Less than 10. 
So now the law works. Because we need R0 to be <laughs> less than 10 to simulate this pair, because this is a pair. Now, as I was saying, I'm not really uh, correct. I'm not, I don't write the, the way we need to add in uh, individual roles. I want to be able to add frames completely. So let's add two constructors. Um, the spare, which has a complete frame. And the strike, which also has a complete frame. Um, the spare and the strike do the same as this. Actually, this is the same as adding a, a strike. So this is a definition that we can add. Now we can also say, hey, the games need to be observably equal. So if we have a game that we added strike to, uh, not the gen, it's the same as adding a 10. Wait, this is the, this is the strike. And if we roll a spare, that would function for any roll that is less than 10 in the first roll. Then we still have the 10 minus the arrow zero. So these two are but they say, oh, wait, this is spare. And in the spare, we define that if, if we call the spare, we define that the first parameter is the first frame, uh, the first row in the frame. So does this make up for a good set of laws? There is nothing in here about the 10th frame. And I believe that we should be able to say that a game is only 10 frames, but that means we should be able to observe it. These are the two laws that define scoring. And they would work for any game at a new frame. So this new frame would not uh, return, uh, would not give true at a, a game that's in the 10th frame. Yeah, of course. Should, we should define that as well. So if we have a game somewhere before here, we need to have some laws. If we If we, if we have a game and we only roll strikes for any number of strikes, 
it will always say for any number of strikes fewer than 10, it will always say yes, we are at a new frame. So. We have to do this starting from an empty game. Yeah, I would define this. I was thinking about doing this. If we add a strike to the game. But this doesn't work in frame 10. I need some more ideas. I'm not sure. This is a lot that wouldn't hold. Hmm. Well. Let's implement some stuff to see how far we get, because we still have three minutes left. This general was one that would be uh, in the range of 0 and 10, so these are valid rolls only. Uh, gen game would be a game at, at most 21 rolls, so Now we have to implement these. There is no frame. If these are the frames that we have, this is an implementation. So let's see if we can make the loss hold. Uh, a new game is a game with no frames. Every rule. and oh we will have to claim this anyway um, the frame so far if it's a new frame we can just add it to the list If it's not a new frame, then we have to look at the frame, the last frame we had. And the last frame we had, we need to add it to if the last frame Add well, there is there can only be one role in the last frame, or it doesn't exist. Wait, yeah, we 
the first roll is always good. Let's say we just add a pins to the last string. So this would cover all all rolls. Um, spare is just rolling. This is roll zero, so it's just rolling zero and then rolling ten minus zero. A strike would be rolling ten. Scoring is the interesting thing, and its new frame is if we have a game with an empty list. That's true. If we have a game with the first frame. either the sum of the last frame is 10 or the length of the last frame is more than two oh, I should enclose this like this Oops. Oh wait. Like this. So I have defined everything here now, except for the score. That's It's just at all pins. It doesn't work like this, of course. But we do. We do have. <laughs> we did implement the laws uh, except for the scoring laws correctly. So this says something. Okay, I'm really well, I'm going over time again. Uh, 33 minutes in. Uh, I will need to learn to start editing these uh, editing these uh, kata. They they were intended to be just for um, well whatever I do in the morning. Uh, just put it online. But if they are uh, interesting to watch, and I I should make them more interesting to watch by just cutting out stuff that is not interesting. Um, at least uh, thank you for watching again. If you did, uh, thank you for bearing with me. Um, Tomorrow I will go uh, go back to this gata. I will still do. Uh, I try to do the algebra driven design method. I will try to think of better laws, um, and <clears throat> I'm planning to do this uh, for the rest of the week. And on Saturday, I hope to compile something that might be that's that's not in the form of a kata. <clears throat> it's just about a description, and I will try to do this. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I will try to um, uh, do a, a weekly video on Saturdays, um, just explaining uh, more of the principles while I'm not rambling. So those videos might be easier to watch. I hope so. At least, for anyway, um, thank you again. Leave a comment if you have uh, suggestions. Uh, leave a like if you did like the video. And I will see you uh, tomorrow again. <clears throat>